Hey everyone, I hope you are doing well. And today I want to share with you a couple of thoughts in order to help you keep pushing f uh, forward when you are doing your, your calls to get your appointments. One thing that I've been using lately that has been very useful, it's in accordance to an advice that I got from a psychotherapist. Essentially, I was getting super exhausted for some reason uh, making calls. A and it's not like I have call reluctance or anything like that, like at all. It's just that like I picked up the phone and after this, just one call, right? And you, conversations usually do well because people see that you are hustling, but you are very respectful. So you like uh, very articulate when you're talking with them. You are very uh, like uh, respectful how you are having a conversation. So people feel that, right? So it's about you. It's something, something in your psyche that's uh, throwing things off balance. And I, I got into this forum and I just asked this, listen, for some reason this is happening and I don't know, I don't know what's, what's wrong. And I got a couple of them They actually gave me like different uh, approaches of s not solving, but they see the situation because remember psychotherapists are very, they're very sensitive people. They are very attuned to people's feelings. They understand that something's wrong and they want to get the energy in balance again. And most of them, the overall ar arching theme was that you are, you are essentially preparing yourself for failure. So it's like you're calling someone and you are kind of concentrating your energy around this has to work. But on the other hand, you are, this is something that is of uh, pressure. But on the other hand, you're already expecting that thing might not work. So you are like, elevating your um, data points in your brain to be like very laser guided focus into answering people's questions and like uh, getting the thing to the left or getting the thing to the right again, right? That takes a lot of energy because it's like on the one hand, you are forcing yourself to, I have to make this amount of calls, let's say 60 or 100 or whatever the number it is. But on the other hand, you already expect, you need to be like super polite, super respectful, super correct when addressing with people and like, um, being sharp in regards to what you are telling them so that uh, you have the conversation going in your favor. And what happens is that there's an adrenaline spike. And what ends, what ends up happening is that when you disconnect, the thing goes down immediately, so, so you feel it. So I started having some troubles doing this. And one of those uh, psychotherapists actually gave me advice. I started doing that and it works, it really works. And what, it, what, what I usually do is, because I'm, when I'm calling people, I'm facing the other way, so to the monitors. What I, what I started doing was I started disconnecting this monitor. And the reason for it is that I started seeing myself like, like in front of the mirror, right? And you have to, to a certain degree, disconnect yourself from the conversation. And I don't mean by, let's say, being 100% disconnect, like... Uh, um, in a way that you would sound robotic. That's not what I mean. What I mean is that you limit the amount of energy that you are placing uh, to, to the call. So what that entails is that you are limiting the amount of energy that you're going to waste on that call. And that's important, you see my catcher. And that's important because it will save you energy to the next call. And this sounds like a little weird, but I'll give you an example. So let's say you, you are like, I gotta make this call, I gotta make this call, I gotta make this call, right? Instead of putting yourself in that state, say, I'm just going to make a call. See what I mean? You're still providing the energy to the call. If the person asks you questions, you like keep counterbalancing and having like a conversation, but you are limiting the amount of energy that you are putting, the pressure that you're putting into that call. Because if you keep repeating that process, like one, uh, th let's say 50 or 60 times a day, you're going to get exhausted. At some point, you're going to, you're going to finally quit because the body can't stand that that uh, kind of spike and then drop and then spike and then drop. So the best way to do that, I found, is that I disconnect this monitor. Now that you can see that my cat is on the back. So I disconnect this monitor so I can see myself. Just like I was having a conversation with that person. It just happens to be me at the end of the monitor because I'm just seeing myself, right? So it's like, you have a hi John and so on, so you're having a conversation. But then look at the way that you are talking. You're not like uh, getting, ever seen that, that uh, ever experienced that? Like you're having a conversation, then someone tells you something, then you grab a pen, like immediately start writing or something. Don't write anything. 
right? Just look at yourself in the mirror, like you would ha be having a conversation with yourself. Very controlled, very paced, very relaxed. I don't mean like sleepy or anything, just or like completely disconnected. But it's like, hi John. So and keep building the conversation from there. You're not that like death or life or death situation. Even though it is a life or death situation because you're trying to get a, a customer, but you're gonna get exhausted because you get a, you have to sift through lots of people until you get those two or three green ones that are gonna pay the bills. But the thing here is if you place uh, too much pressure on yourself on the one hand and on the other, you are also, uh, also needing that your brain can provide you a way of talking to those people in that courteous and respectful manner it's very exhausting. It, no, no, no one can withstand that tremendous amount of effort that you are asking for your brain from your brain. So the way for me to solve that, I found, and hope, hopefully that that works for you, is that disconnect one of these monitors or get a mirror. I have a small one here, but this one works better because it's just larger. You don't have to keep looking at the mirror, right? Just look at yourself like we're having a conversation, like we like we are having right now, right? So it's like, hi, John, I'm so-and-so from the X company, and then you say your pitch so that you're having a conversation. People feel you there, you're more paced, you're more relaxed, there's no tension there. And on the other hand, like I said, if you connect with them in a way that you can start getting them to speak even better, because you start relaxing, because now they are the ones that are taking over. And this is important, because they are talking, you are now relaxing, you're now in control. So remember, get a mirror, lower the amount of threshold of pressure when you are placing that call, even though it sounds counterintuitive, but it's all about the long term throughout your day and not just making one call, right? So I'm going to call the millionaire, not something like that. Just I'm going to call John. Hi, John. How are you doing? See what I mean? It's, it's, it's not like because people will be intrigued because they feel like you're confident, but you're very calm, right? Why would you be stressed? Right? That that it shows some some sort of anxiety smells weakness coming from from the person when when he or she is in is, is in this anxious mode so if you do things like this it's a it's a brain trick and i, I say this again it's a, a mind trick and it's to help you to make more calls throughout the day it's the same thing when i was doing the marathon it's exactly the same thing i wasn't saying i gotta make a, a marathon because i want to lose weight and no, i was just saying one step at a time see what I mean I just did the I did the marathon nevertheless right it's just uh, instead of looking to the top of the mountain right you have that in the back of your mind but you're just looking at like next step right and the other and the last one kind of a bonus uh, tip is don't uh, have too long of waiting periods in between calls I found that as soon as you disconnect the call and you call the another the other one afterwards it sounds counterintuitive, right? Because you are placing pressure again. But if you keep doing this, you'll start noticing that your calls will be more fluid in between like two, three, and maybe up to 10 minutes most between calls. And you'll be more uh, kind of consistent. That's the main key point here. Because I found that, and I, I've already been very critical about this. As you, you know, there's, there's, no f there's, no, there's no way for you to be making 500 calls. It just doesn't work. If you make up to 100, that's incredible. Most people will do in between 20 calls, 30 calls. If you do 60, that's pretty good. And to be making 60 calls, you got to remember that people that reject you, I, already, I have numbers here. I actually have numbers here. So I'm basing this based on numbers. People that do reject you, the calls are below three minutes. It's something around 50 seconds or up to one minute. It's something like, can I call you later? I'm in a meeting. It's something like that. And you'll notice that the call is like around 50 seconds, up to one minute, one minute no more than that. Then you have people that when you say something, they say something back, but you, you kind of start the ball rolling, but ends uh, afterwards. It's something like uh, you do your presentation, then they ask you how is it that you can help see the, the first, um, first line that gets you to your second snippet, and then you have a s a start s s saying something, right? So those conversations that kind of uh, start on the right track and then kind of, well, end up well, don't actually make a sale, but at least the thing like you, you add some conversation, some type of conversation besides the guy that is trying to rush you off, it's around up to two to three minutes. So, and then you have those, then you actually do have a conversation. You keep them engaged and then it's like a back and forth conversations. There's actually a conversation there. 
and you get those people around the 20, min 20 minute mark and you f find that you are having a conversation with someone that is taking you 20 minutes, right? Think about it. You have, let's say, 10 calls, right? Throughout one hour. If half of those, let's say, out of the half of the half of those, right? So let's say five of those calls, let's say two or three of those, they didn't pick up the, the, the phone or some sort of like interference in a call, you couldn't understand the call, so it ended up like a little bit more abruptly. So you got two or three calls, right? It's about one to two minutes, right? Because it's like the, I'll call you later, something like that. So you didn't have like the, the rest of the calls, like the rest five calls, right? <laughs> that essentially there are people that you have like two to three minutes, right? So let's say, and then you have like one or two that you have like 10 to 20 minute calls. So it is unlikely, and obviously you're gonna have some resting s space in between calls because like you, you, your head would explode. So think about it. If you start at nine o'clock in the morning, right, just, and you make like let's say this uh, five to ten call mark per hour, and I and I don't mean like going through the, um, like, uh, going through calls that pe just making like general numbers and say is the boss there. I'm not saying those calls. I'm actually saying like calling business owners, right? So more focus, getting the list from LinkedIn. So it's not like yellow pages, like uh, trying to talk and then you have a gatekeeper and all that. No, you're just ca calling directly the, bus the business owner. So if you're doing this, probably they're gonna have a conversation with you, right? So if you start at nine o'clock in the morning, so it's like nine, 10, 11, 12, up to one, one o'clock, so four hours, right? Out of these four hours with some resting periods in between, you're gonna make 30 calls, right? You're gonna make 30, 40 calls, right? And if you start at like say at 2 to th two, 30 o'clock in the afternoon, so it's like two, three, four, five, six, up to seven, so another five hours, and some resting periods in between, right? It's, it's, another, it's another 50 calls. So you're kind of pretty much metric, it's between 30 to 100 calls. You'll find you'll be doing about around 60 calls, because sometimes you have like a, another meeting or you have some, something, like, something like that. So if you can, if you, if you only can do these calls and they are more optimized towards, uh, because you're speaking with the business owner, or the, the guy that makes the decision, you have to have your energy in a way that works better. And this is what I found is that I'm just having a conversation with this mirror, with myself. It just happens to be the same person, right? So limit the amount of energy that you're using because remember, it's about closing deals, closing deals today. 60 calls are gonna get you three yeses, uh, four, um, seven yeses, that will result in three meetings, and out of those three meetings, you're gonna close one person. If this person represents in between five to 10K, right? You're not gonna sift through the call like just randomly out of the blue and just get over with, right? You're gonna have a, a conversation with someone, with that person, it's gonna ask you questions, right? It's gonna take you 20 minutes or more, right? So, but since the, all these first uh, steps that you are doing is essentially to sift through people that are not interested and the ones that you can actually get a meeting, those seven ones, Right, so you have to have energy in order to keep doing the numbers, and in order for you not to become exhausted with the process, uh, the psychotherapist actually not one like with three of them. I just uh, picked up uh, advice from all of them. It helps because it's about the adrenaline level. So you have to stay yourself in a calm state. I usually meditate now before I do my calls. It usually helps, and uh, or sometimes I do this. This is some reason this helps me a lot, and so. This is what I wanted to share with you, is that instead of the call reluctance, it's because you are exhausted from dealing with the negative sayers, negative people, and you're not focusing on like the correct people that talk with you. They treat you by your name. It's the first time that they are talking with you, and they say, hi, John, nice meeting you. Right? They're very respectful, right? And that uh, gives you this positive vibe, this positive uh, en energy. And this is super important. I'm not that like uh, exoteric guy, anything like that, but this is important because this keeps your brain um, kind of in a more calmer state. It's like a soother state. And this is important because otherwise you're gonna, you're gonna break up at, at some along the line along the way and you're gonna get frustrated because you're not going to make the call that you need to make in order to get the seven yeses to the three meetings to the one person that can pay you the 10,000 K. So I just wanted to share this advice with you because this has been working for me better. I'm feeling much better now, more in control. And this is all about that. So I'm in control of that call and I'm, 
in control of the amount of energy that I will be spending on that call. If I start feeling that that person is very negative, I'll kill the call immediately because I need my energy. And on the other hand, if the person is like engaging in a conversation, I focus on how, what type of uh, open-ended questions I can a ask in order to get them to talk, right? So you can limit the amount of energy that you're using so you can withstand the, the effort throughout the day. It's like running a marathon, like full sprinting mode throughout the three or four hours. It's just, no one does that, right? So you need like uh, lower states throughout and then some probably ones that you put more energy into it. So I hope this uh, was helpful to you. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you soon.